Why, hello there, my name is DepthCharge2030, and uh, today, uh, first things first, I just want to say sorry about my whole long of absences and all that. I have school and other things going on, so again, really sorry. But that aside, today, it's like new comic books, you know, it's Wednesday, new comic books, and by new, I mean brand new. We've got Lobo, number one. Ooh, take a look at this comic art. Uh, that's just, that's, I don't know what, he's like the brand new, new 52 Lobo, and he's just cutting a dude's head off, and it's very action-packed, I like this cover, it's kind, it's kind of got this whole simplicity, but it has this dynamic feel of a space opera-esque, kind of in the background over here, while the rest is just, I don't know, so I like the cover, that's cool. So let's just jump right in and talk about the issue. And the thing is, with Lobo, they've been building up Lobo since the New 52 started with uh, Forever Evil, and it revealed that the Lobo that we've seen in the Deathstroke books, which I actually have the Deathstroke trade over there, called Lobo Hunt, where they, in where they first introduced Lobo into the New 52. But in, but in Forever Evil... Uh, the Villains Month, they revealed that that Lobo was actually, uh, was just some dude pretending to be the real Lobo, who turned out to be this rather slim, uh, sexy, bounty hunter, kind of got this whole, oh hey, you know, those, it's, because the thing with Lobo is that he's a representation of the current, uh, generation of comic books, how Lobo in the 90s was the 90s the person, while this Lobo is kind of just where comic books are now, I guess, so that's cool. So the book opens up with the with Lobo killing his copy, and it's just, it, it kind of gets kind pretty meta with their conversation about, with the old Lobo being like, haha, I'm the L Lobo and all that, and everything everyone knows is, you know, me. And you, it's like, ah, oh. And so, Lobo, he kind of kills the copy Lobo. And then it kind of gets interesting, because then when that happens, there's like this whole... He kind of just knocks out. I think, like, there was this whole psychic relationship between them. And so, in the span of three issue, three pages, they just kill, kill off the primary threat to Lobo. And they even address that. And then they just go on with the true storyline here. Where we see, like, while he's knocked out, Lobo, he's looking at Cesarnia. I hope I'm saying that right, Cesarnia. And it's the genocide of Cesarnia, I presume, because everyone dies around him. And and when I, you know, the whole sexy Lobo, they really, th they really push that whole thing with Lobo here. And holy crap, oh my god. Wow. And so, then we, Lobo, he wakes up, he's like, hmm... Damn my Zazarnian blood, I would cut my brain semi out or something, cauterize it so I don't dream. And then, this one lady, alien lady, who he kinda knows, walks in, is like, Oh hey, you're in prison right now, but don't worry, you're out on, we're gonna bail you out, but and we're gonna hire you to hunt down these other eight assassins, the best assassins in the universe, mind you, and you have to kill all of them before they kill their target. And so Lobo, he's like, okay, sure. And so Lobo, he goes on his way. While, while that, he's like, hmm, I wonder what I'm, you know, supposed to be doing now. So he kind of cut, he, he fights his way through this assassin's, the, the assassin named Gus. He fights his way through his minions and gets to him and pretty much easily kills Gus. He's like this four-armed guy, alien guy, who's a miner. And he describes himself as a sapper, and so he just cuts his head off instantly. He's like, okay, that was easy. Not much of a hunter. And so that's when we kind of learn who the target of the contract is that these eight assassins are trying to kill. And it's the planet Earth itself. And so that's where the comic ends. And what I think about this, what I think about this book... Uh, it's a good book. I, I really like it. It's a good introduction into this new Lobo. It really is. We kind of see... It's like a passing of the torch of, like, everyone's belief of this 
of the old biker Lobo and all that. It's And it just shows him ki get killed off by this new Lobo that everyone's kind of not too sure of. And it's ki it, their conversation really gets really meta and just describes the whole th dynamic between them before he get he shoots his head into electricity and knocks out. And so it's really just saying, okay, so we're not going to do that, you know, we aren't going to go with this whole what you expect, we're going to go with something different. We're going to go in this new direction. We've got this Lobo who's kind of dealing with his own past too, and it's cool, it's cool. And I I just want to say the writing for this, like the character for Lobo, I've never been a big Lobo fan myself, but I like it, so... Bun, Brown, DeCastro, and Pantazis. I hope I'm saying all of your last names right, because I actually haven't gone in and read your full names, but I like what you all did with this book. I'd give it a... I'd actually give this a 4 out of 5. It's a solid first issue, no doubt, and it's a great jumping on point with the Lobo character. It shows you a great contrast of who these two different Lobos are at the beginning, and jumps ahead with this with the primary Lobo who, who we're going to be following with this book, and it just goes forward from there. And I like it. So, my name is Depth Charge 2030. I like this book. You see this back cover right here. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know what's going to happen when this show when this show airs. Yeah. So, thank you, Lobo Book. Thank you, viewers. Thank you for watching this. I really do hope you enjoy this. My name is Depth Charge 2030, and take care.